Hello, I'm Frederico van der Kellen, your host, and welcome to Remotely Speaking, the podcast that shows the challenges and opportunities of the remote world. Since our workday has dramatically changed, it became necessary for us to adapt faster than ever to the present reality. So debating the topic remote has presented us with an urgent matter. Several talking points were chosen in order to enrich this podcast. Work, teams and career management, home office productivity, nomad life, work-life balance, and so on. So we really want to provide our listeners and viewers with cutting-edge information, tips, points of view based on testimonials and experiences. So don't miss our updates. So I have here with me Gonzalo Mozinho. Hi, Gonzalo. Thank you very much for joining us. How are you? I'm great. Thank you, Strico, for having me. <laughs> yeah, no problem. It's a pleasure. Um, so today's episode is how to uh, coach people remotely. Uh, and it's a pleasure to have you here uh, for our viewers and listeners. Gonzalo Mozinho is the International Executive Director of Prime IT and Prime Near Shore. Uh, two companies that belong to Prime Group, where I actually work. So I, I, I know a little bit of Gonzalo's experience, and I had the pleasure to deal with Gonzalo. So it's going to be really uh, important and and exciting to listen to the pieces of advice, advices that you have to share and your experience. Uh, let me just in- introduce you uh, briefly, uh, and then you can say a few words about about yourself and your experience. Uh, you studied in Coimbra, right? It's um, exactly. Yeah, see, I, I've done my homework, so I know. Uh, so for for our uh, viewers out there from everywhere, but also from the ones, uh, the uh, viewers and listeners from Coimbra, uh, you, you've you studied there. Uh, do, you nor- do you often go, go to, to Coimbra? No. Not really, actually. The reason why I, I chose to go to Coimbra uh, was just because I had a friend that was living in Coimbra, and before it was in Coimbra, I lived nine years in Macau, so um, actually my one of my friends, uh, when he returned to Portugal to study at university, he told me that Coimbra was more or less like Macau, where you could meet everyone, everything was pretty uh, accessible, and I was like, okay, I'm from Lisbon, uh, all my family um, lives in Lisbon, so I think it's good to run away from Lisbon, and a place like Coimbra sounded very interesting, so the choice was uh, it was quite obvious. It was like a nice city with a nice university, uh, away from my family. Great. Yeah, <laughs> away, from, away from away from the family, close to the parties and came at the fitas. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> pretty obvious, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Obvious, like easy choice. It was an easy. easy it, it was not a difficult choice for you. So uh, <laughs> when people ask you if you if you liked uh, studying in Coimbra, it's probably probably a rhetorical question because <laughs> the yeah. answer would be so so obvious. Um, so just uh, uh, tell us a little bit about about your 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 not just about yourself, but a little bit yeah. about your uh, your experience and uh, your recent. Uh, uh, more most recent uh, years and a little bit about uh, your experience and uh, and yourself to to the people who are listening to us so they know a little bit more about who Gonzalo Mozinho is. Okay, okay, Fadik. So um, briefly, um, I uh, I was born in Portugal in Lisbon, um, and when I was uh, ten, my parents went uh, to Macau uh, to find a better. Uh, a better life for actually for for us and uh, they are still there so they lived in Macau for uh, more than 27 years now and um, I decided uh, at the time uh, what I was going to do after the high school if I was staying in Macau or if I was uh, coming to Portugal and um, life for those that don't know life in Macau is very very easy going Everything is, uh, I mean, everything is easy almost in, in Macau. Um, and that was something that I liked about it, but I didn't like because I was too young for choosing an easy path. So the choice of coming to Portugal, going to Coimbra, where I had no family, where I had to cook my own food, making my own bed, I was not used to that. Um, but uh, it was, for me, it was uh, something that uh, had to be done. Um, so I decided to go and study um, uh, engineering and uh, uh, Universidad de, de Coimbra, uh, IT engineering. And um, the choice at the time was not actually my passion. 
my my main passion was always management. But um, at the time, I remember looking at news uh, and uh, seeing that a lot of uh, people with um, with uh, uh, diplomas and with uh, with degrees uh, were working at restaurants and they were doing things that they didn't never study for. And I remember so being a, a management student was also a kind of uh, of something that you could turn out. Uh, at, in the end, doing something you didn't want to. And my reason why I decided IT was because I liked IT. Um, but I thought, okay, this is something that I know when I go out of university, I'll be doing. I'll be an IT engineer, and I'm not going to do something else that I didn't study for. So I worked as an IT engineer for uh, four years. And after those four years, and I considered those four years very successful as an IT engineer, I thought, okay, now I know that I'm, I'm a good IT engineer, uh, but I'm going to follow my passion, <laughs> management. So I decided um, to take the, the, the risk uh, to leave the, the consultant life and, um, and try my, my luck as a, a junior business manager and create a total different uh, career. Um, and uh, suddenly, I think uh, I found my path and the success uh, so far, it has been like amazing, and I'm still fortunate enough to say um, that I'm, I'm I feel happy to be paid to do something that I love. You know, this kind of feeling it it's really it really motivates me, and it made me um, what I am today. It's uh, always trying to be better uh, by doing something that I really love and to help others to achieve success. Yeah, and uh, it's very interesting that because uh, when you started at Prime IT, you started as a junior business manager, right? So you start from scratch. From so, scratch. <laughs> from scratch, right? So you you were you were you were working as a consultant uh, at Nova Basi, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and uh, you start from start from from scratch as a junior business manager. So you you. Um, Walk the way through, all the way through, uh, until you became uh, um, an international executive director. So definitely, there uh, uh, um, a very uh, challenging path, but also very rewarding and very uh, um, something that you can. That I assume that you feel proud of, and somehow yeah. that shaped the person you are today. Of okay, evolving in the same company and 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 seeing all uh, and witnessing all the changes that. Regardless of it, if it's Prime IT and if it would be yeah. another company, all the changes that a company uh, goes through over the the, um, uh, the past over the years. So yeah. um, exactly when I joined Civic, I, I think we were like sixty people uh, in overall, and uh, moving from a company like Novabuzz at the time with more than two thousand to Prime IT with sixty, uh, everybody was a little bit surprised uh, because. I mean, I, I had the recognition at the previous company, and uh, I was admired. I was uh, successful. So uh, why changing to such a small company? And uh, I consider myself a kind of a black sheep. So and I'm fine with it. So I like to choose paths where uh, no other or very few uh, decide to 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 do. You know. So this is also one of the reasons why. Um, that just defines somehow my my growth at the company. Um, so as as you know, or maybe you don't, but when uh, after three months as a junior business manager, uh, Ricardo invited me and, or asked me if I was interested to to open the first office in in Paris, and I told him absolutely. I'm always ready. You know, I'm an immigrant, so I mean, let's go for it. Challenge is a challenge. And uh, when uh, we arrived in, in Paris, we started with a 15 square meter office uh, with just two desks, one phone between us and uh, myself and him. And uh, I didn't speak any French at the time. So the challenges were like huge, huge for us uh, in all sense. No experience, no know how. I mean, uh, as I always say, it was the perfect recipe for disaster. It was a perfect one. And uh, we make it through. And um, even today, there are a lot of things uh, that when we are kind of struggling, uh, when we think about those three, four years, the initial ones, um, when we look back, uh, I mean, 
once you we 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 were able to 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 make it through and survive in such a hard very very hard i think it was the hardest market in 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 europe for sure the the french one once we survived um like we did i mean the other ones are just uh uh we just need to adapt and and, uh, and find our way but uh though we have been learning a lot i've been learning a lot and uh this is what makes it all fun <laughs> in well, the end. as as long as you can go back and think okay it has been worth it then you're already uh, ahead right so exactly. you're already winning. Uh, perfect. Thank you, Gonzalo. Um, actually, diving into uh, our um, subject of today, mm -hmm. how to coach professionals uh, remotely. Uh, let me start with um, with this first with this question. Um, well, you, you you still have to coach your 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 manager, so you manage you manage teams, uh, yeah. business units. Uh, so you still have to manage. Uh, you still have to coach and manage your your managers and your teams. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Giving giving the pandemic, and if we go could go back for the last the last year, uh, mm -hmm. given the pandemic, coaching during 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 COVID um, can be it has been more challenging. I, I, it should, yeah. would, be to, would be would be fair to say so, right? So, in your yeah. opinion, um, what are the challenges and opportunities of coaching mm -hmm. people in these times? Okay. First of all, I always like to give the context that um, if I go back to March 2020, um, I, re I, I really think I really thought this for, for myself. Um, I wasn't sure if we would if we would be alive uh, at the end of the year or not, uh, because nobody knew what was coming. Uh, this virus was like just um, growing, growing very fast. Nobody knew uh, how we were. Um, I think uh, the, 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 the virus, so everybody was a little bit frightened and no one body had any answer how to how to make it for the next, uh, I would say, three, six months end of the year. Nobody could predict or plan. So um, when we are talking about um, coaching during these times, I think we should divide in several, um, I would say, several uh uh, dates. The the first one was making sure that the team was safe. So uh, we were not caring about coaching. Uh, my main concern were uh, honestly people's safety, are they, people's health. Yeah, yeah, are they safe? Uh, do they have like access to, to buy food, medicines? Those things were the most important for me. So I was not thinking about in the initial. Uh, period about uh, how can I make it uh, as normal? No, there were so some other first, priorities. Yeah. Your first concern so, is to make sure that people were yeah. uh, provided all the support uh, needed, yeah. and people could be reassured as uh, as off the pandemic were was going. So exactly, exactly. So after that initial um, concern was uh, um, being taken care of, the uh, of well, of, by, by the society, of course, by our doctors in, 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 the, in the hospitals, this, the the food supply chain, uh, all those industries that made us um, being able to work from home, and just being then focused on okay, you can work from home, and the environment is safe, and you can access food to the supermarkets, and okay, so you have a laptop, you have internet, you know. You yeah. don't have to, con to worry about all those uh, things. So after that, we said, okay, now we can be more uh, focused and 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 understand what are actually the challenges and the opportunities. Uh, that's the, the the main purpose of your question. So the, this the first challenge was making sure that people had everything to 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 leave and uh, to um, to be able to to work. Once that they, they have all the they, resources, they, yeah, they have all the resources. resources. Exactly. Once we we were able to assure those resources, um, then what uh, for us uh, was also very very important was to respect and to be comprehensive in terms of what's the environment that uh, everyone has. Because yeah. I have a home, you have a home, but uh, some people are working from um, the, the the rooms that they are renting. We have uh, different people with different um, uh, contexts and different, different contexts. 
Yes, different different contexts and different um, environments. So I think which was very, very important as well. <clears throat> Second step to understand that not everybody has the perfect environment at home. Physical environment or mental environment sometimes, especially if the ones with kids or with uh, more family members at home, uh, it could be challenging as well. So you need to respect that. You need to understand it before demanding whatever. So this is also something that we did. We were uh, very, very tolerant and we were not demanding or whatever. We had to adapt and to understand which persons were uh, had conditions to um, adapt and to do what we were expecting them to do. And those that couldn't uh, be up to our uh, business requirements, try to understand why and trying to find uh, alternatives like uh, allowing them uh, to come to the office if needed. So this is something that we also um, were uh, being, um, we allowed them so we could make sure that they were, some of those, they were happy at the office than at home. And we need to understand that, we need to respect that. So you cannot expect that everybody has everything uh, to to perform equally from their homes, like if, as if they were at the office. So this is another challenge uh, was understanding that we don't control the office anymore, the office or the home, each, each individual home. We don't control the environment. You control. You can give like a good infrastructure and good conditions in the office, uh, but when people are at home, you don't control it anymore. And once yeah. again, you need to respect it. Uh, and you need to understand, and okay, if someone needs some time, is not available, has to do something to take care of something that um, just that that he needs or she needs, it's fine, you know. So this was also another additional challenge was uh, being very very uh, comprehensive, uh, making sure that when the time uh, when was the time to demand and to ask for like results. I mean, we were being fair, right? So this is something yeah. that starting management, we had also uh, to take to take note for it. And um, of course, we are still learning. There are a lot of uh, of of challenges. Uh, we still we, we still are dealing with 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 challenges. We don't have the magic formula how to work like before or even better remotely. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't. But one thing we do is. Okay, we made it through. Uh, it has been one year. The company is growing. Uh, we are onboarding uh, junior people. We are coaching those juniors uh, remotely. So those opportunities um, we have been that we have been facing. I think we have been overcoming. Okay. Um, and in terms of, and, and, and sorry to interrupt you, in, in terms of uh, what, once you, you take that step back firstly to uh, make sure that people were being ta- uh, taken care of and people had all the resources to yeah. uh, feel comfortable. So a lot of things that had to be put in place before you actually uh, start managing people and results as you, as you, as you all said. Uh, after that, that stage, um, how your what what were the techniques uh, or the coaching and manage management techniques that you actually uh, uh, put in place or if you want to share ha- actually how did you uh, um, coach your 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 teams uh, in in order to increase their productivity remotely mm-hmm. so that that that's definitely a, an important point to understand yeah. how how do you coach did you coach on how you currently yeah. coach people yeah. uh, to increase, maintain and increase their productivity uh, remotely? So first of all, you need to be organized. Uh, you need to, um, to, to to take care of the agenda more than ever uh, so people can um, daily know what to expect from them. Once again, since you're not at the office and you cannot just stand up and ask your colleague what you're doing or if he needs help, uh, you need to make sure that you have enough uh, space in your agenda that if somebody knocks remotely, um, you have time for them. And if not, you can arrange time um, very fast. So what we do, we do have uh, daily meetings. Um, mm-hmm. We have uh, weekly meetings also for, for uh, another topics. Um, but I think it's uh, to increase the, the productivity 
uh, first of all, is understand uh, very, very well what um, what kind of conditions do they have. And when I say conditions, it's at home. So mm-hmm. if yeah. you're talking about people with kids, um, I mean, you can increase productivity, but uh, it's it's tricky because once again, they are also dealing with their stuff, right? Yeah. And schools were closed. So um, I think when you say increase, at least you don't decrease, you keep it as it was before, which is already not that easy, since especially in business, um, we we like to be uh, always challenging with, with each other. So without seeing them, uh, we are competing remotely somehow. Um, we are managing a company remotely as well with other departments that you yeah. cannot just um, go and, and talk with them uh, directly. So we need to uh, arrange time and uh, especially I think you need to, 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 to find and to be there no matter remotely or not remotely, but people need to, to, to feel that you're available and they can reach you mm-hmm. as if you were in the office, you know, and this kind of. Um, so making yourself available was one of your uh, uh, um, w- one of the your uh, uh, initiatives or one of the the actions that you that you uh, implement yeah. or that, that you had um, to to increase people uh, people's productivity in terms of okay so people could reach out to you anytime they would want as if they you were at uh, at the office as before yeah. right yes exactly and also regarding expectations I think it's very very fair for everybody to know what to expect from them since we are talking about remotely uh, remote expectations now. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so those kind of things need to be clear so they can organize themselves and uh, they know what they should deliver at the end of the week or at the end of the day. So when we do a next uh, point on the day after, they feel like this kind of fulfillment, okay, I've done my part or no, I need to, uh, to increase something or to do something else. So, this is also quite quite important. It was making sure that um, you, you were able to re- to arrange. And once again, since we have several teams, was not just um, fixing everything. You know, fixing or uh, not everything to be uh, mandatory. To allow also some teams to have the freedom to decide if they want to meet in the morning or in the afternoon or end of the day. If mm-hmm. they want to make e coffees, no e coffees, e lunches or e-beers or whatever. So uh, there's some uh, standard policies, but there's a lot of um, of things that is currently being done that we allow the team to find their own match with mm-hmm. so they can adapt. Because once again, each team is a different team and uh, it's important for them to feel that since they know their individual uh, needs much better than us, uh, it's important when I say us, the, the the board of the company. It's important for them to feel that if they need to implement some new things or some new ideas, they have the freedom for it. And then we try to understand if it worked, and if it did, uh, then we extend to other teams. So this kind of uh, learning curve, you are still there, and um, it's what it's ma- helping us also being more productive today. And, and actually, the, I, 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 and, and let, tell me if you agree, but somehow the circumstances of people being uh, uh, somehow they saw their lives, their personal lives and, and professional lives being merged within four yeah. walls. So they're yeah. they're basically living where they work. They're working where they live uh, and 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 with, with their wives, with their kids or even people who are alone. I mean, they're working uh, where they live. Um, but but somehow uh, this was also an opportunity uh, work wise to brought people uh, together to bring people together, so to to so yeah. people become more uh, become closer to each other somehow it, it mm-hmm. seems like a paradox, uh, but somehow the the fact that uh, you, professionals and directors and managers had to somehow understand and be comprehensive as you as you mentioned yeah. to people's environments and contexts somehow. That 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 empathy. Uh, would you say that 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 empathy was very important so people could uh, um, see their sense of belonging to their team and to the company uh, um, uh, become stronger? Yeah, hundred percent, Federico. Because if you don't allow people to be who they are at their homes, 
I mean, where are you gonna where are you gonna let them? Yeah, right. You know, so for us, and it was quite obvious. For need once again, there are some best practices like uh, you need to wear um, a shirt. Um, but in some meetings, we had people uh, wearing like uh, uh, sweaters or um, t-shirts and said, hey, t-shirts, maybe it's too much, but at <laughs> least it's like a polo, you know? And yeah. so, okay, next time I wear a polo, but at least they could feel that um, we were respecting that they were at their home doing the work, you know? Yeah, so yeah. If, yeah. If, if, if you try to... Um, Be too rigid. Too rigid, I mean, come on, I'm at my home, you know, I'm using my... My internet, I'm okay, trying my to space, make it's my, my space, so, my, bus, uh, my, you know, yeah. And I need to feel comfortable because uh, if you are in the office with 1,000 square meters, you can walk, you can go to the to the kitchen, you can, I mean, you can spread, you can do whatever you want. If you live in a house like with 100 square meters, and if you have someone else working also next to you, I mean, you need to manage, you know, the the space. So your the, the, this kind of comfort. It's important, you know, the, the comfort of uh, where you're seated and making the phone call, the, the, the clothes that you're wearing. I mean, it's it, it, all this combined. Uh, and the, once again, the flexibility that, that and the tolerance that we gave, just to say there are some standards, but you're at your home. So we respect you in that, in that sense, because once again, we are also in the same position. We are not uh, working from yeah. from the office as well. So we also like to, and I like, especially to put myself on other people's shoes and say, okay, if I was them, uh, I also would like to be and to feel that, okay, I'm at my home, you know, so I'm doing my job, and but I'm at home. And, and, <laughs> so and, this kind of compromise yeah. is very important. So the, the team can feel united and for these kind of things, don't be an issue. Because if you were there, like, oh, why are you not wearing you know, the a suit? Why you don't have a tie or what? Or being formal like, at home, being formal at home. Formal and yeah. strict, you know, it's it's already tough. So you need to to um, to be put flexible. some things aside, be flexible, so they can feel also uh, integrated and and comfortable to work. Definitely an important point, uh, Gonzalo. Uh, going back to the way you coach and the way you manage your teams. Uh, mm -hmm. What did you do differently or what are you still doing differently than before? And when I say before, when you actually had the, the privilege <laughs> nowadays, mm -hmm. it's a privilege to be face-to-face uh, -face with your with your teams uh, every day of the week, 24, uh, 24, uh, uh, 24 hours or all, all, all the time. So um, somehow that was taken uh, away from, from, from all of us. Uh, yeah. What do you do differently now mm -hmm. uh, in terms of coaching and managing your teams? I think everything <laughs> is the right answer um, because uh, I had to reinvent uh, myself. I had to reinvent my routines. I had to reinvent um, not the way I was coaching, I was managing people. I think that didn't change at all. I'm still where I was uh, physically. Now it, I'm just remotely. So I'm the same uh, accessible person. Um, I'm still available for everybody to solve their issues. I'm still contacting people to see where we can um, uh, be better and improve our, our service and our, uh, the quality of our, of our um, procedures and, and so on. So I think it's just a matter of more of communication uh, since we need uh, okay. to be once again organizing more our agendas and making sure that the communication uh, flow properly. Um, I think this is still something that we need to work better and as more more internally um, because things and the company is moving and we are making business. But uh, of course, since everybody's working remotely and, again, and once again, since everybody have their own uh, situations at home, uh, some more easy, some more uh, more tough. Uh, and you cannot expect like someone to be there for you uh, 24 seven yeah. or even during work hours. Sometimes if you call somebody and say, Oh, I, I just had to do this to, to take my kids or uh, I had, uh, I cannot talk now because I have a meeting going on with my, my partner and it's, it's too loud. Give me some, some minutes. So this kind of, of, um, 
of things uh, had to be reinvented. And um, but apart from 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 the communication, I think uh, nothing changed uh, severely. And, and, and when and when you say communication, obviously uh, um, the, the communication channel uh, is now different. Uh, would yeah. you say that? Would you say that uh, uh, in terms of the amount of time that you reach out to your teams or that you communicate with your teams uh, on a daily basis uh, somehow increased, decreased? Uh, you kept it the same uh, uh, um, now that we work from home. Did that change or did you change uh, the not your communication style, but the amount of times, for example, that you communicate with your with your with your teams? I don't think so. No, the, the amount of time. No, the way. Yes, of course. Mm. Um, but the amount of time and also it has to do also with the, what kind of management each one uh, has. And my time of my kind of management is uh, when people ask me, do you have five minutes? Even if I have a lot of things to do, I always say, yeah, I do. So no matter if it was just knocking at my office or asking me through Teams or Skype or uh, calling me, um, usually that uh, still uh, still remains. Um, so the, the kind of time and the amount of time uh, it didn't change. The, the only thing that changed uh, is, for example, and I have two babies at home. Is sometimes if I pick up or if I try to solve some situation, you might hear some of my kids screaming on the on the back. Um, but that 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 didn't affect. Uh, Anything it's just we all get used fight. to that, yeah. We all yeah, we all get used to that. So if no, it's, it's yeah. the dog or the cat or I have a dog yes. myself, so yeah. It's, <laughs> so we, all, we all get to know the, those the, those kind of things. Actually, those are the things that actually uh, bring people uh, a little bit uh, closer and bring people True. together. So you you get True. you get a glance of people's lives. So uh, so this is only I think the the main difference that uh, that we we all. Uh, had to to adapt and to to adjust was uh, making sure that we can't work in a bunker. So uh, there are like, of course, since you don't control the your work environment anymore, if you were at the at the office, uh, you need to to respect that. You need to to be to be okay to to work and to um, and to once again to to accept that if somebody's not available, uh, fine you. They will reach out to you as soon as possible. Yeah. You know, so, good. yeah, to to adapt, and you need to once again. There's a lot of if 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 you notice, uh, there's a lot of human touch um, on all my my answers because once again, this situation it's, it's too severe uh, for us to talk about just uh, KPIs and numbers, and that happens if the human side and the human part is being taken care of. Yeah. If it, I mean, the rest is like in uh, at the office. If you take care of their employees at the office, then the results appear. Yeah, you naturally, yeah. You don't control the office anymore. You need to make sure that they have what same thing. They need at home. It's the same, and results will come uh, um, naturally. So this part of adaptation, I would say, uh, it was done already, and now it's the natural part of collecting the the results of uh, everybody knows what to go back and what, what uh, and what to do. And, and and people and people and employees, of course, they want to be trusted, so they want to be uh, at home, knowing or or feeling that okay, my boss, my manager, my executive director, uh, he or she trusts me. So yeah. th that actually makes the the person even more responsible or eager to to achieve the results he or she is supposed to because he or she feels yeah. trust. So definitely an uh, an important issue to 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 approach and to 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 guarantee not not to approach but to to guarantee. Um, and, and that's a huge yeah. opportunity, Federico. Actually, it's a huge opportunity because since you it know is. everybody has more freedom. I mean, they can stand out from the crowd more than ever because everybody is in the same situation but um you can sense that okay this 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 people or this person um is is assuming the you know the the environment and yeah. uh is making more than ever and uh, i mean he found his way and uh he's standing out and of course he's doing it with more freedom than ever and uh, those yeah, exactly, that will exactly. stand out 
uh, I think will be uh, recognized by the companies and uh, they, once again, it's an opportunity they have now um, to, to accelerate their careers because, I mean, if, if you've done it from, from home, um, I would say you can do it from, from anywhere, right? Because you don't need to be controlling the office anymore. You can, yeah. I trust you, no matter where you are, you'll be doing your job. And this is something that it's very important because I would say traditionally the 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 most of of business owners they like to see to feel the people uh, they like to know at what time they arrive at what time they leave and they like micromanagement okay. what we the so-called micromanagement so that yes uh, yeah uh, and uh, it's the race now doesn't work it's yeah. the race because you don't control it anymore you can assume but you're not there you cannot see it right. And so those that are able to, to show uh, results in this kind of environment, um, I think they can go uh, really, really far in terms of their career. Yeah. Uh, uh, Gonzalo, um, working remotely for so long, uh, as we all know, can have, um, well, several uh, types or several uh, different uh, um, impacts. And mm -hmm. one of those impacts uh, is on people's motivation. Mm -hmm. Right. So how do you motivate people uh, and maintain their sense of belonging, as you, we already uh, mentioned here, uh, regarding the company and the team? So uh, share with us some, some, uh, some, some examples, if, if, you, if you have, on how you motivate your, your, your teams um, uh, and your, uh, your business managers in order to uh, maintain their sense of belonging to, to the company and the team. Okay, I would say first of all is understanding um, if they have or if they want to work, for example, uh, at the office once or twice a week to allow them that kind of, I would say, freedom so they can be uh, with each other, so they can be with, uh, with the other departments, with myself, with my colleagues. Um, this kind of belonging uh, was, I would say, never lost because um, in terms of back office, uh, I would say a big part of the team uh, still wants to work from the office, but since they cannot work every day, uh, we do some, some kind of shift. Um, but this kind of, of sense was uh, never lost. So it's true that it has been already uh, a year, um, but we have senior people or people that are working with us for more than five, six, seven years. So they know us, they know who we are, uh, remotely or physically, they know us. So this kind of sense of belonging didn't change at all because we are still. So they the same feel people. engaged. So so yeah. They feel yeah, and once again, we trust them. They trust us, and uh, it's more than fine. The, um, the I would say the, the 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 tricky part here it's related with junior people that uh, join us uh, during the pandemic, and then don't know who we are i mean how how we are used to work they never or they saw just uh, just times uh, during those the, during the, the the year and for those that could be a little bit more challenging but mm -hmm. once again that's why we give the freedom of each team and each department to decide who wants to go to the office how often um and this kind of um uh, Freedom of, I would say, freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. um, it helped a lot uh, minimizing the impacts of this kind of belonging, the, the sense of belonging to the company. Because if they want to talk with us remotely and feel the company, and we are providing, as you know, uh, training for the junior uh, through our campus. So we are creating this kind of value culture. We are still working on it as we were at the office, but now it's remotely. Um, and additionally, if they want to feel the human touch and mm -hmm. to open the door at the company and talk to this receptionist or, you know, to, to walk around our office, they still can. So they don't feel disconnected. And um, it also applies to, to not just the office, but also to the to consultants. Um, there are a lot of initiatives that invite consultants to, to go to the office, for example, to, to get their East, uh, the, um, Easter egg. Um, we invite people to come to the office. Some things we keep at home, but for some other, we like people to still come to the office so they can be with the managers and, and feel the company, right? 
Um, so I think we 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 don't feel that uh, we, we lost this kind of of, of um, sense of belonging. The only thing that we've lost is true was the events since we the events were something very very important for us and it was like some um, I would say major dates that uh, that uh, we had through the the our through the year. Uh, that we were able to celebrate and uh, to to be with with our consultants and with the entire company, and of course doing re it remotely, it's it's quite limited in terms of uh, this kind of sense that uh, it's not the same that we cannot replicate uh, at home. We have thought about it, but like asking you to drink a beer at where you are and uh, dancing uh, during ten minutes at our in our own chairs or in the okay. room. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and uh, 10 minutes later, uh, I'm cooking dinner and, uh, uh, and you are maybe uh, walking your dog. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's too little compared to what we were um, used to, which was uh, being together, talking about stuff for hours, you know, and uh, that's the, the, the only thing we couldn't replicate. So this kind of sense of belonging, it's, it was a little bit lost in terms of uh, of events. Mm -hmm. Apart from the events, I think the the company adapted really, really well, and uh, people are still available solving issues and regarding the, the the culture. I mean, we still are the same the same company. We are trying once again to find new ways to communicate better with 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 the people um, digitally, but uh, but that's it. With I mean, there's no major, uh, we don't see any major bounce in terms of belonging. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, also a, an important part is that this is also, for sure, this is an opportunity for companies, companies in general, to become employees and companies, uh, to become more yeah. creative in the way they do things. So uh, every single one of us can be more creative in the way we do our jobs, um, regardless of the nature of our jobs. Um, so we can become more creative, but companies can be creative as well in terms of, okay, what kind of, uh, so before we had team buildings or we had activities face-to-face uh, -face in order to um, increase teamwork and team spirit and all those important things that bring a team together. Now we cannot do that uh, in a presential format. Uh, right. How can, what kind of activities can we do to 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 maintain that uh, that sense of belonging to people. So definitely it's a, that, that's a window of opportunity for companies out there. Uh, last but not least, let me ask you uh, one thing. Well, it's it's to sum up of what we have been uh, uh, pleasantly uh, discussing here, uh, and you shared some 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 tips and and, and with, from your experience. Uh, to finalize, I'm going to ask you just uh, two three tips for coaching a team remotely so people who are out there uh, in your in the, in the same situation as you as inter, as exec, international executive director or managing teams or uh, struggling with that um one two three tips uh or for coaching a team uh, remotely from from your experience okay so i would say um understand that everybody has their own issues and uh, their own situation um, that they don't control the environment uh, anymore, the, especially the, the office environment you don't control. Uh, and you need to respect and to be tolerant uh, regarding that. Um, be organized in terms of, um, of the agenda. Uh, also be very clear in terms of what you expect from them and what they can expect, expect from you um, regarding whatever, uh, KPIs uh, or deliverable what they need to do because some people um, during the daytime maybe they are not that available but they might work during the night because it's where they find um, more time and they can be more concentrated and for us it's fine right as long as they do their job and they work the same hours as expected I mean the eight hours or nine hours a day so Especially talking about about the consultants and um, the the productivity of so of our team internal team and external team, um, it increased actually because once again uh, people 
were very, very responsible. Uh, so once they feel that you are there for them and you are you're going to respect their space um, and their own uh, situations, I think you can find ways uh, how to um, how they can also compensate you back because you're being a nice human being being, you yeah. know. Uh, and that's 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 quite quite important. Um, and I would say um, at last um, also to, for them to be available, because once again, you don't know exactly when they might need you. Uh, it might be at the end of the day. Uh, it might be in the in uh, early in the morning. Um, but you need to be there because uh, people have once again. Once again since they have their own um, daily, the, 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 the daily organization might be different from person to person, it's important for you to accommodate as many as possible. Um, Gonzalo, as an international executive director, uh, and, and Prime IT has offices abroad, uh, namely in Madrid, in Geneva, in, in, in Paris, um, tell us a little about your experience of coaching and managing teams uh, from different cultures, different people from different cultures, from different nationalities, and a little bit uh, uh, of this situation of having to coach people remotely, uh, not being able to actually go to, to Geneva or to Madrid, a little bit about their experience of, uh, of coaching and managing all those teams. All right. So... Um, I would say that nothing uh, severely changed um, because once again, when uh, we are hiring people remotely or remotely when people from other countries um, to be responsible for our own operations, um, I always like to say that uh, I we hire good people. And I always like to give this kind of expression. So everybody knows what I mean is I like to know that I'm working with someone in some of the geography that I would feel comfortable to give the keys of my house, you know, for yeah. real, real. And um, so with the pandemic and uh, for the fact that I'm not being able to fly over uh, Madrid or Geneva um, or some other locations for almost a year and something, uh, it changed nothing because they know me and know them. And some it happened actually during this year, especially um Especially, I would say around June, um, between March and June, uh, in some countries, uh, people were afraid and uh, what was going to happen if they were going to be fired or not, because they were not sure if projects were going to be cancelled or not. Uh, and of course, uh, in Portugal, we have more than 1,000 people, but in some countries, we have 100, we have uh, 50, mm -hmm. we have uh, section of France where you have uh, uh, almost 500. So uh, people were a little bit uh, without knowing what we were going to do as a, as, as a company. We're going, were we considering like setting down, setting down some of those countries if volume didn't uh, uh, come up or yep. if uh, projects were, were going to be uh, cancelled? And um, because they, 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 they knew me, um, and once again, since we were deeply connected, when I was telling them, you have nothing to worry about, uh, they felt, okay, if Gonzalo is saying that I have nothing to worry about, I have nothing to worry about, you know? And yeah. this kind of, uh, of sure. relationship I have, I have with them, um, it helps a lot uh, to make things still growing um, regarding, the, uh, regarding less the fact that I'm not there. But so the culture of tra transparency of and reassuring people. Okay, we are yeah. we are taking yeah. care of you. Okay, all the operations that you that we have out there and you're uh, the ones responsible for. So we count on you. So uh, don't worry, worry about. So reassuring people was definitely an important uh, starting point for you. Yeah, very important because once again uh, we weren't sure what was going to happen. No one was, and uh, but then that were not. Uh, as close to us because they were not in Portugal. And as you know, the headquarters are in Portugal. And because we still had a very good communication and very transparent relationship, uh, they could feel uh, reassured that, okay, if they are saying that it's okay, I have nothing to worry about, so I can focus on what I'm doing. And uh, this really helped. So um, I, I would say once again is, when you work 
on this kind of human side of uh, of everybody everybody around you, and you create uh, the company um, surrounded by good people uh, with ambition, but that will respect the the, the colleague. And uh, I mean, it has all the ingredients to to to, to success, right? Yeah. And this kind of core values of the company, of the people, of showing the vision of uh, uh, that we want, making sure that they are uh, aligned with us. Uh, I would say it never changed. Uh, it's just more than the same. And even today, I, I'm sure that when I go to to Spain next time, or to or to to Switzerland, or as you, you think you're already aware, we're going to open a new country, right? Yeah. When I go there, but especially for 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 um, France and for uh, Spain and also for Switzerland. I'm sure that the, 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 the sense and the, the feeling that I will get from my colleagues is actually the same as I is as if I was there the last week. Yeah. Because it's like when you see a friend uh, after 10 years, but he's like a good friend. He's like, hey, good to see you. And, you know, nothing changed. You know who he is. You know who you are. So it, it, when we talk about management and, um, and building companies, Companies are just labels, right? But the, the real the real company behind those labels are people. And if we have the good foundations, if we have people aligned uh, with the culture, with, with you, uh, with good values, and uh, I think magic happens, you know? And this kind of magic is where um, actually I'm, I'm making uh, sure that they have the glue between the fact that um, they are apart, but they are not that apart. You know, they are still yeah, integrated. Yeah. And, 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 and the uh, fact, and the fact that, uh, and, and and the fact that uh, Prime IT is still uh, flourishing and the group is flourishing and 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 yeah. and, and, and growing uh, is has a um, has a lot to do with all those things that you that you have implemented and all the things that uh, at Prime IT in terms of management that you put in place. Um, last but not least, uh, I wanted to ask you. Uh, to share uh, for some uh, some people out there that are actually uh, struggling with managing their teams or managing their business units, what are the tips? Uh, if you could share with us uh, two or three tips uh, on how you or for coaching a, a team remotely. Okay, I would say listen to them, ask them if they have everything they need to do their work. Um, it's it's crucial to know that. Uh, they have all the conditions. Once again, you don't control the environment. If you don't control the environment, at least try to understand what's uh, everybody's environment, which environment they are in, you know? And uh, I would say, first of all, try to, to, to listen to them and ask them if they need something out of, uh, out of from you. Uh, secondly, be organized. Uh, it's important since people are re working remotely, some are more organized, some are less organized, mm -hmm. making sure that everybody understands the... The, what what are the main standards of organization, time management, um, if they should prepare themselves for a, a daily meeting. You know, one thing that we've learned with uh, with our consultants, especially the developers, uh, there are a lot of things that they do in terms of agile with, with, mm -hmm. with Scrum meetings, and they have like daily stand-up meetings um, in the early in the morning to make sure that they can, everybody knows, what they did last uh, last last day and what they are going to do during that day, and same for management. We have been implementing also the quite same um, philosophy, making sure that daily people know what they need yeah. to do, that we are all aligned, uh, what we should expect from each other. So this is also quite important. And I would say, um, thirdly, um, find yourself uh, time and um, make sure that your your leaders. They have time and they have flexible uh, flexibility to be available. So no matter when somebody needs you, you are there. Because yeah. once again, you don't work anymore from nine to six. Uh, you have people starting uh, from seven or from eight because it's better for them. And you have people finishing maybe at 10 or, or 11 or midnight. So making sure that you don't need to be 24 seven available but at least that if somebody contacts you, you know, and you can guide them, maybe let's schedule a meeting 
tomorrow or if I can reply you today and um, and, and and help you solving something. Maybe even if it's during uh, dinner, let's help because maybe it's the best schedule for that person in terms of of, uh, of time management. Yes. So it's also quite important to 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 make yourself uh, available. And once again, be very flexible because we live in that kind of of times so where flexibility um, adaptability is also, I would say, are crystal today for yeah. companies to thrive and for employees to feel also um, recognized. Recognized. It's very important to recognize people as well. I mean, celebrating the, the victories, uh, whether if it's their individual or team uh, victories, uh, um, actually recognizing it's something that I would, I would add to what, what you're saying, actually. That, yeah. uh, and it has to do with what you actually said. It's uh, being flexible, showing people that they can trust uh, they can trust you and they can trust the, the, the company and recognizing people so they can feel reassured and knowing that they're actually doing the, the job the best the best they can definitely a, a, a pearl that you just shared uh gonzalo thank you very much we are running out of time here thank, uh, you, thank you very much for your participation for the time you've given us uh for this podcast uh it was great to have you to have you here as our as our special guest this uh, this week sharing all the pieces of advice and all your experience as an international executive director. Uh, one curiosity, uh, as you lived in uh, Macau, do you speak Cantonese? Yes, you. Uh, yeah, okay. No, yeah, yeah, I don't. <laughs> I asked that I don't. Yeah, I, I've, been, I've, been to, I've been to Hong Kong, I've been to Hong Kong and, 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 and Macau. <laughs> But I uh, just wondering if you if you would speak Cantonese. Uh, that, yeah, that I just is, said that. I just said a little bit, and I don't speak uh, Cantonese. <laughs> just a little I bit. I know. I know. I know how to survive, but that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Survival. Uh, once again, thank you very much. Uh, as for us, guys, uh, stay tuned. Um, follow us on all, you know the drill, follow us on um, on all the social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Instagram, everything, uh, Prime Group, Prime IT, all the companies from the group. Follow us, stay tuned for more updates and wait until our next episode for our next special guest. Thank you, stay well.